We are on an island here in the United States. No other country is struggling with the virus like we are in the way we are at this point in the arc of it. It is a global failure, as the Biden campaign points out in this new ad. You are going to be so proud of your country. We're going to win so much, you may even get tired of winning. And you say, please, please, it's too much winning. We can't take it anymore. Mr. President, it's too much. And I'll say, no, it isn't. We have to keep winning. We have to win more. We're going to win more. The president has this metaphor he likes to use. It's something someone must have said to him at some point in some meeting he was half listening to, and it got buried in his brain. It's to talk about the virus like a, like a dying fire. Quote, we may have some embers or some ashes or we may have some flames coming, but we'll put them out. We'll stomp them out. It's not a wrong metaphor, actually. It's a pretty good one. The idea is that you can suppress the virus enough, then you can just take care of the embers. And that's actually accurate. That is exactly what all those other countries have done. They have suppressed it enough, so they essentially have firefighters running around the country, extinguishing each ember as it appears and stopping the country from catching fire, stopping the virus from spreading. But that is not us, no. We are way past the ember state. The country is on fire. It is in flames. We cannot stomp it out. And the rest of the world is looking on in horror. This job, this job is about protecting Americans. It takes strength, courage, compassion, resilience. That's a president. For whatever reason, someone in the Trump White House gave the okay for Dr. Fauci to, to do an interview with BBC Radio Today. And Dr. Fauci said the situation in the United States is now much worse than it has ever been. What we've seen over the last several days is a spike in cases that are well beyond the worst spikes that we've seen. That is not good news. We've got to get that under control or we risk an even greater outbreak in the United States. Why have you had those spikes, do you think? When you look at the fact that we never got things down to baseline, where so many countries in Europe and the UK and other countries did, they closed down to the tune of about 97% lockdown. In the United States, even in the most uh, strict lockdown, only about 50% of the country locked down. That allowed the perpetuation of the outbreak uh, that we never did get under very good control. So that's why we are where we are tonight in the United States. We only did about 50% of the work that we needed to do, and we did it for a very short time. The two big lines on this graph show coronavirus cases in the United States and in the European Union. And in late March, the United States and the European Union were in exactly the same place where those two lines cross in late March at about maybe 27,000 cases a day. And now the European Union is down below 5,000 cases a day. And the United States is soaring above 50,000 cases a day. And Dr. Anthony Fauci says we may be on our way to 100,000 cases a day. And three months ago, we were in exactly, exactly the same place as the European Union. What's the difference? Trumpism, republicanism which is now the same thing as Trumpism. The president of the United States did depart from his written text today to say a few words about the coronavirus. Very few words. And the crisis uh, is being handled. He then rambled on incoherently as he does about China and concluded his coronavirus comment with a masterpiece of Trumpian incoherence. It's a life, it's got a life. And we're putting out that life because that's a bad life that we're talking about. It doesn't matter why he talks that way. It doesn't matter if we're watching a man trapped inside a tiny vocabulary, desperately trying to sound smart or whether we're witnessing neurological decline in real time, what matters is that those empty words are a window into the empty mind of the president of the United States who has not 
led this country the way the leaders of Europe have led their countries and brought their countries into a much safer place during this pandemic. And it is at the same time a window into that very dark mind that has had absolutely no reaction whatsoever to intelligence reports that Vladimir Putin is paying to kill American soldiers in Afghanistan. As of tonight, on Donald Trump's watch, the United States has once again set a record high for the number of coronavirus cases reported in a single day at 53,419, which means that as of tonight, there have been 2,744,594 confirmed cases of coronavirus in the United States. And as of tonight, this country has suffered 129,691 deaths. So we know that Donald Trump tried to answer the question of what he would do for a second term, and he, he, he failed at it. He just gave nonsense words. So he got a second chance to try and answer the question. And I want you guys to listen to it uh, on another network. Here it is. I will tell you, it's very simple. We're going to make America great again. We are doing things that nobody could have done. We've rebuilt the military. We have a ways to go. We've uh, done things for the vets like nobody's ever seen. We can do even more. We did choice, as you know. We did accountability. What we've done, nobody's been able to do. But we have more to do. Economic development, jobs, uh, trade deals. The tr we have to make our own things. We're doing it now with steel. We're doing it now with a lot of different products. I've done that. But we can do it with a lot more. We want to build our own ships. We don't want to send out to other countries to build ships. So we have a lot of things we can do. We've done a lot, but we have a lot of things we can do. T Tiffany, uh, uh, that was on the Sinclair broadcast. Group. You're at Harvard. Can you interpret yeah. with that? What did he say? <laughs> <laughs>
he can conceivably look any of them in the eye, given the magnitude of the betrayal. But after he was briefed, after he found out about the contracts on American soldiers, what he did about it was he decreased our troop strength in Germany, acquiescing to a Russian demand and giving them a win. He demanded that Russia rejoin the G7. So there's been no punishment. And for the first time in the history of the country, and we've had incompetent presidents and dumb presidents and dishonest presidents, but we've never had a faithless president. We've never had a president who is faithless to his oath and refuses to defend the country from an attack by a hostile foreign power, whether it's a attack on the lives of our military or an attack on our election process, which so many hundreds of thousands of Americans have died to preserve and protect. It's a shameful, shameful, despicable hour in the history of the American presidency and in all of his desecrations and degradations of his office. This is the most severe, it's the most scandalous, and it should shock the conscience of every American. We have never had a president who refuses to fulfill their oath when it comes to being the commander in chief of the armed forces of the United States, quite like Donald Trump has, it's a despicable hour with regard to this issue. Steve, uh, the description you just offered uh, about what happens to the killed in action took me back to um, the knowledge that that's exactly how my cousin um, returned from Vietnam. And um, it, it's, I've been trying to actually hold myself away from this story because um, at its core is this thing that is so agonizing that you've just described. Um, what, do you, what do you expect Lawrence, to in the be second, the next? In the Go ahead, Steve. I was saying, Lawrence, in the, in the Second World War, for the first time in the history of the, of the world, uh, an army set about the remarkable goal of retrieving its war dead. And on the early hours after VE Day, tens of thousands of Americans in grave registration details fanned out across Europe. And they accounted for every American who was killed in action, as many as possible. And in 1946, Ships, they were called ghost ships, were, were filled with tens and tens of thousands of American soldiers sailed from Europe back home, laden with the bodies of American soldiers. About 40% of the casualties were buried in Europe. But the ethos of the American military is we leave no man behind, no woman behind. The betrayal of Donald Trump of our nation's sons and daughters in harm's way in combat is impossible to overstate with regard to the magnitude of the betrayal. It is apart from anything we've ever seen in American history. It is despicable, it is deplorable, and it is disgraceful.